When we're dealing with transfer pricing, we need to look at it on two faces. Whether it's, it's, whether it's for decision-making purposes or it's for performance evaluation purposes. Well, if it's for decision-making purposes, we say that the general rule for the intermediate product should be transferred at the minimum transfer price. And as we know, the minimum transfer price is always the marginal cost. Now, let's pick up the three scenarios and see how we can apply it on decision-making purposes. In the first scenario, we said if we have a perfect market for the intermediate product, we agree that the best transfer price will be the market price plus or minus any adjustments. Now, we're saying that, look, the market price will be a fair value. We say that here, we're saying that the market price will be a fair transfer price for both the buying or the selling division. We mean here that both divisional managers will be happy with such a transfer price. In a situation whereby we have production surpluses, if we have production sur surpluses, from what we learned earlier, we said that if we have a surplus, the optimum transfer price will be to transfer at marginal cost. Now, would that be fair for decision-making purposes? Yes, because the only relevant cost we have over here will be the marginal cost. The fixed cost is not relevant. We're saying that the marginal cost being used as a transfer price will be the fair transfer price for both divisions because that will, only, that will be the only relevant cost in such a situation. When we move down to a situation whereby we have production constraints, we said if we have production constraints, we said the best transfer price will be to transfer at marginal cost plus the shadow price. Would this be fair? Yes, it will be fair. Because when we spoke about relevant cost in F9, we said that a relevant cost is any cost that changes due to a decision that we made. Now, if we have production constraints and the selling division is being asked to produce some products to the buying division, therefore it means sorry, this will mean that the selling division will actually be losing some contribution that they would have earned if they are sold externally rather than selling internally. So the marginal cost is the cost that they incur to produce the product, and the opportunity cost of not being able to sell externally will also be relevant. So for decision-making purposes, we say yes, that will be a very good transfer price. When we come to performance evaluation purposes, we're saying that the general rule here is to set transfer price that will be fair that will be fair to both the selling and the buying divisions. So when it comes to performance evaluation, we should look at what? A transfer price that will be fair to both divisions and will also ensure divisional autonomy. Bear that in mind because most of your questions will be based on evaluation, performance evaluation purposes. Now, class, let's pick up the three scenarios and discuss if the optimal transfer price that we said will be used will be fair to both parties and will also ensure divisional autonomy. Now, in the first scenario that we saw, we said that if we have a perfect market, we said that the best transfer price will be at market price plus or minus any adjustments. The first question we ask ourselves is, will this be fair to both parties? The answer is yes, it will be fair to both parties. Also, we say that market price plus or minus any adjustment, will that also ensure divisional autonomy? And we say that yes, that will also ensure divisional autonomy. So in the situation we have a perfect market, the best transfer price will be at market price plus or minus any adjustments. In the second scenario that we saw, we said that what about a situation whereby we do have a surplus? We what about a situation whereby we have what? A surplus of the intermediate product. In that case, we said the best transfer price will be at marginal cost. First question we ask ourselves again is, will that be fair on both parties? The answer is no. Because if we sell at marginal cost, the buying division will be happy to buy at marginal cost because it's cheaper anyway. But then what about the selling division? The manager in the selling division will go like, I don't think this is fair because if I sell at marginal cost, 
I have a problem. I have a problem with my first course over here. So what this divisional manager will actually think of doing will be to report uh, what the selling, sorry, what the manager of the selling division might do will be to attempt to sell externally or if there's no market for the external, uh, sorry, or if there's no external market for the product, the manager will not be willing to sell internally. And that will not be good for the company as a whole. We say that because of such a situation, then the transfer price of marginal cost, if we have a surplus capacity, will not be fair. This can actually be resolved by using either a two-part tariff or a dual pricing, which I'll be talking about later today. Now, let's look at a third scenario. In the third scenario, we said the best transfer price, if we have production constraints, will be to charge the marginal cost plus the shadow price. Now, the problem here is that the fairness of the transfer price will depend on the shadow price. On what basis do we use to charge the shadow price? Here, we're saying that, look, let's look at a very simple situation here, whereby the supply division has to produce the intermediate product to meet the internal demand of other, sorry. In a situation whereby the selling division or the supplying division needs to produce the product just to meet the demand by the, uh, the buying division or for internal demand purposes instead of producing other products, then we're saying that because we are not producing the other products, this supplying division will be losing contribution and therefore the shadow price needs to be built in to cover this contribution loss. Now, in a situation whereby the selling division produces and sells only one product, then we say that in such a situation, if they are being asked to sell internally, then the contribution loss of not being able to sell externally will also be built into the shadow price. Now, let's look at what is happening here. What is happening in these two situations that we have is that in both situations, you realize that the selling division seems to be having the best of the deals here. As I said earlier, anytime we're dealing with performance evaluation purposes on transfer pricing, we need to think about the fairness and both parties being happy and also divisional autonomy. So in the two scenarios given, you realize that the selling division is getting the best of the deal and the buying division is not happy with it. Therefore, it will not be fair to the buying division. We say that such a thing can be rectified using either a two-part tariff do a pricing or the cost plus pricing. Most of the questions from transfer pricing that has been examined in recent times, the examiner gives you a scenario, and in most of the in most of them, the examiner will require you to give more than one transfer price, depending on the situations available or depending on the information given. What I can actually ask you to do is read the question carefully, apply the three scenarios. Do we have a perfect market? Do we have surplus or do we have production? constraints. In reading the scenario, you need to identify if we have surplus capacity for the intermediate product, whether we have a perfect market, or whether we have production constraints. Now, try to apply the three rules here that we've stated earlier. See, in the exams, as I said here, you will often, be, you will often end up with a wide range of transfer pricing based on the situation. The lower the transfer price, the happier the buying division. Also, the higher the transfer price, the happier the selling division. Now, be very careful here. Always remember that you need to think about fairness and divisional autonomy. I made mention of dual pricing and also made mention of two-part tariff. Let's try to explain what dual tariff is or let's try to explain what dual pricing is. When we talk about dual pricing, we're saying that Dual price is a situation whereby the two managers of the two divisions are allowed to record two different prices for the intermediate product. In F7, you did something we call the pop adjustment. That is basically because that's in F7, you learn about a pop adjustment. Now, in this case, because the performance of these two divisions will be assessed, the selling division manager will be willing to sell the intermediate product at a high price 
whilst the buying division will be willing to buy the product at a lower price. Now, what head office will agree is that the divisional manager in the selling division can record selling the product at a market price, and the manager for the buying division can also record buying the product at the marginal cost. The difference between the two prices will be knocked off using the PAP adjustments after the performance of the two divisions has been assessed. Now, the reason why this is allowed is purely for divisional performance purposes. Two-part tariff, on the other hand, is where the two managers of the two divisions will agree on a lump sum being paid by the selling, by the, a lump sum being paid by the buying division to the selling division. Now, this lump sum will help the selling division to cover some of its first costs. Now, in the course of the period, the selling division will therefore transfer goods to the buying division at the marginal cost. Now, the good thing about the two-part tariff here is that the buying division is not buying at the market price. All that the manager on the buying division is doing here is the buying divisional manager is buying the product at marginal cost. The selling division will also gain a lump sum from the divisional manager of the buying division to cover some of its first costs. So both parties will be happy with such a situation.